Um, I you can't, have to I, have I can't comment. I'm, I'm not a Quranic expert, so I can't comment on <laughs> on the physics, on the, on, physics. On, on the physics, controlled or uncontrolled. I, I think um, right. the key point, the key yeah. battleground about evidence for God using reason is, is really in the area of philosophy more than science. And science shades off into philosophy at mm. some point. Um, but that's where the real battleground is. So it's slightly, people tend to argue past one another a little bit when it comes to just science alone. But isn't that idea of the, it's the cosmological constant? It's this, uh, it's this, this, oh. this number, this yeah. tuning that has to be right within that something that, like yes. 120 yes. decimal places. Nicky, is that not a real problem for you, Peter? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a real problem. And we're, we think we understand the nature of it as well. The point about scientific approach to understanding the origin of the universe is is that it fine tuning of it, the universe it yes. simplifies the kind of questions that one should ask in the expectation of getting answers and one of them is the fine tuning another is to say well okay a lot of energy had to be made at the inception of the universe how much energy was made and science what science does and what religion does not is to provide an answer to that second question and it says the amount of no. the amount of the amount, no, no, wait, wait, let me finish. Finish. the amount of energy that had to be created at the beginning was absolutely zero. So if you extrapolate that to the amount of work that God had to do at the time, you can see that he didn't have to do anything at all. What science is doing well. is really <laughs> getting to the core <laughs> of this what is, actually happened kind of on dichotomy day here. dot. There's a false dichotomy. If you're an atheist, you, you, you somehow support the progress of science. If you're a theist, then you want to quash it. No. Well, no, that's not the case. He's no. a scientist. Well, yeah, well, they yeah. understand science. Side. They accept evolution. They Absolutely. Accept... So yeah. what we're saying here as a theist, what we're saying is that uh, as a theist, we hold that the universe has an origin and the universe was uh, fine-tuned for the existence of intelligent life. And anyone who holds that falls within mainstream science. Of course, these uh, achievements are tentative and they, they're open to change. But at the current moment, everything points to God. No, no, it doesn't, because there are thousands, uh, there are many explanations of why um, life, why, why the universe is fine-tuned. For, for, for life. One point is that a universe couldn't come into existence except with the fundamental constants that we've now got. But that's and begging the question, and it's, Peter. And it's just that's begging got, the question. And it's just, Why were they and, point you? And it, has, it is just a happy accident. Did we just get lucky then? Given yeah, we just got lucky. Given we just got lucky. Another, yes. another one, which is actually gaining ground, is that there's, so what we have Wait, let them finish. Sorry is that there are trillions and trillions So we have chance of the gaps of, rather than God of the gaps. Please be quiet while I'm trying to put you right. That there are trillions and trillions and trillions of universes, each with it may be a different mix of fundamental constants. And it is not in the least surprising that one of these turns out to be appropriate for life. OK, sure. well, let's talk about God in our... I just wonder, there's something else here. I know, Diana, you're desperate to get in, but... <laughs> and you can, you can address this question as well. Let's move on to God in our everyday lives. I mean, that was fascinating. Um, but God in our... I just wonder... That's exactly what I was thinking. David, Sorry, well, David, I... when, let's, let's consider this, if you will. David, I'll get you to answer this question. Um, there are moments, and we all have them, when we look at someone we love and we just feel elevated. We feel, that we feel a sublime, <laughs> transcendent... I saw it when Peter was looking across at Adam there. Um, <laughs> no, but we feel, we feel a, you know, a sublime, transcendent moment, and, or we see something utterly beautiful, and we feel something incredible. Is that, some people think that is when we're close to God. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've heard this a lot. I mean, uh, I was recently in hospital and I went bonkers for four days. I had four days of delusions. Those delusions to me were utterly and completely real. The mind is an absolutely extraordinary thing. and It's hugely uh, varied. It's incredibly evolved uh, and it is far more flexible than people believe. But that believe. feeling it's of sheer love and sociable. transcendent beauty. Well, sometimes, what... yeah, sometimes, sometimes you feel that. Sometimes you feel, my God, it's a horrible, bloody rainy day and I wish I wasn't going out <laughs> in it. And that person is really getting on my nerves and so on. The <laughs> moments we don't talk about. So why should we ascribe God to the moment when we feel that kind of moment of love and not God also to that moment where we feel pretty crappy, uh, for instance, which is also quite a lot of the things that we feel. I don't feel the need, in a sense, in other words, when I feel good, to think, ah, I feel really good, somebody must have given that to me. I'm not or just talking about... Really it's, not just, uh, uh, it's not just feeling good, is it? No, no, no. It's not to explain think, to him. I think in practice, um, for many of us, for myself, 
sense of awe in studying the cosmos is often the beginning mm. of um, uh, a movement towards, towards a, a faith. And certainly for myself, studying certain objects in mathematics and science, particularly particle physics, um, gave me an extraordinary sense of order. What's interesting now, to me is why now, you now, need that's, that. Now, that's, not, a, now, that's yeah. not enough to convert someone, mm. but often it's enough to start moving someone. Um, but but what, what often, what, what often um, uh, for, for, for me personally, it's not just the sense of awe, but also the sense of the fruitfulness in the world. And, what about um, death and the famine and well, the disease no, and, the, and about, the murder and all I'm talking about the, the, fruitfulness, the fruitfulness of, of, of faith in so many areas, in art and in music, and in particular the lives of the saints, because every now and again we produce extraordinary individuals um, who, I suppose, and now I'm putting on my theologian's hat, who sort of show the face of God in some way or other. But we produce extraordinary that's, individuals who are that's not amazing. saints. Don't we? We produce lots and lots of, in fact, many more extraordinary individuals who are not saints. Don't Martin we? Luther King was no saint, but he was an extraordinary was individual. No yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, go on. Well, I just, I just want to, because, sorry, the, the, um, lots of people across the room have been talking about the idea that the Big Bang and, and that some of science, that God might be guiding this. And I just think if God is somehow guiding evolution and the development of the Earth and all the planets, could he not have guided it in a way that had a little bit less famine and that didn't have motor neurone disease and cancer and all these other things? Why is that, Pastor? Because you, you address this issue, don't, don't you? Why, why did God, God create you know, E. coli and uh, horrible diseases and parasites that burrow into the eyes of children in sub-Saharan Africa? Why did God create those things? Well, I believe that God, God exists, and, uh, but there's also, we need to look at um, the argument from the, the, the idea of also the spiritual side. We don't just look at the physical side. If we argue from just the physical side, we have a truncated uh, view of reality and of the world because there's a spiritual reality, there's also a physical reality. Okay? And so the evil that we see in the world, according to what I, what I know from the biblical record, is that there is an evil. Evil is real. There is, there is Satan, there is a devil. Why did children get leukemia? Why do you... Illness and sicknesses and evil are coming away came because of sin. Because of sin? Because of sin. God is, okay, God is, God, in, 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 God, in God, there is, no, there is no sin in God. God is pure, God is holy, so is God, God is God's punishing us for, for dying. The way I arrived at atheism was I took a course, it's called the Psychoanalytic Study of Society, and they told us the delusions of a man named Schreber, who was a, was a German judge, and he thought that God was going to make him a woman and inseminate him, and he showed me the allegories between the Annunciation of the Virgin Mary and this man's account of how God was going to inseminate him so he could bring forth a new race of human beings. And the delusion, the schizophrenic delusion, and the uh, story of the Annunciation were so similar that I realized that the human mind can fabricate, and I'm really glad it had such a wonderful effect on your life. And I'm, I'm not no gonna, David Horish. I, <laughs> I don't think. I think it's quite important to avoid labels like schizophrenia. I think to. Yeah. to but Muhammad believed clearly when he went, went. If you if you believe that it's the word of God, you believe it's the word of God. But if you don't, well, that's you've got the to key say that point. he it's believed about, it, didn't he? That he was getting. Well, exactly. But that's the key point. It's about <coughs> interpretation. You don't have to label it as hallucination or schizophrenia if people have this experience. What seems to be important, I think, in terms of maintaining everybody's dignity and respecting everyone's religious positions is that this is about interpretation and your interpretation of what you experience might be very different from somebody else in that experience who may interpret it very differently. But you actually said it was fictitious. I said, I said Primarily that fictitious. Fictitious. the stories are fictitious. The, the stories are fictitious. You're said, actually saying that people's stories within the Bible are fictitious. Well, I'm not saying that eyewitness accounts, no. No, you know, I, I think you'll be very careful about using that sort of language mm. because those stories of people's experience, for example, of Jesus and what he did and the way he lived, uh, people's experience of God within the latter part of the New Testament were real to them and important to them and you're saying they're fictitious, they're rubbish, they're I lies. Said, and I think that they're yeah, fictitious. Okay. I'm okay. not okay. factual. I didn't say that that's well, true. Okay, but you want to be very careful. I think, as a biblical scholar, of saying that they are fictitious. I, I only, a few, minutes ago, I'm sorry, fictitious only a few minutes ago, you were saying that you didn't believe in a God who intervened and you didn't believe in this and you didn't believe in this and that, that it was, uh, we shouldn't anthropomorphise God and that we were putting people in boxes and we shouldn't do this. And now you're talking about stories in the Bible being literally true. Stories in the Bible about prophets, about people meeting God, about miracles being performed, virgin births. I mean, either these things Selling are literally true and we've got an interventionist God or we haven't. No, I don't actually believe we have got an interventionist God, but I will... So they I, so, so it's fiction in the Bible, exactly I actually, as Francesca no, I actually said. will allow people their own experience and the right to have their own experience and that being true to them. And in my own life, there have been things that have, may have happened to me which I feel are important to me, but have pointed in a sense, I like to think of a whole load of arrows that have helped 
get me to a disclosure situation where actually I suddenly take the decision, actually I do believe in this God. Well, Sometimes we do. I don't believe quite so much, scientists but other days I do some, because science, there's enough there to make me jump over intervene. that particular thing. Scientists, will, will, scientists will, will tell us that we, we are pattern-seeking mammals, we look for reasons and we look for patterns, but Logical it's interesting mind. what you said there was some days you believe less than others. Yes, what I makes think... You, what makes you not believe? I think like... Um, any person who is searching for faith, and I hope I'm still searching for faith, you constantly try to listen to those who disagree with you. You try and grow in your faith. You try and learn more about Why your faith. Why do you faith. search and for you, be, Sorry, can because, I ask this because, because Why do you actually, search for it? Because no, I believe no, no, no. that I have a spiritual dimension within me no, no. which needs to be fed. Uh, and that's one of the important oh, things. That's, no, but that's exactly a huge... Because this is the thing, and lots of people feel like there's a gap in their lives, and if that happens to be a gap that God has happens to fit well that's evidence for no, god I don't but that's not feel true a gap. I the existence feel... let me finish the existence of a gap doesn't mean that something exists to fill that gap that's the argument I that says every colander is a bowl it's not some gaps are just gaps and yes we all feel emptiness sometimes no, that I doesn't actually... mean there's a god david up there. what were you going to uh, sorry 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 no i find, I find uh, uh, this takes it back to the to, to the in, to the human need for the thing rather than the thing itself you have decided to search for it hardly surprisingly quite often you find it because you are actively searching for it and in a way that's what the distinction here in this discussion is about you on this side you're always searching for the thing you lean towards it you want it you want it to be you conjure it into existence you will do everything that you can to do because that. myself myself I speak there and actually quite often you do no harm in doing that sometimes you do often that you don't myself I don't have that need, so I don't search for it, neither do I feel the need to search again. Well, that's agreement. fine, David, that belongs to you, but I actually have experienced in my life sometimes transcendence, some sense of is that, the other. Is that what we were talking about God. earlier on? That's some yeah. sense of God, something which is out beyond me, something which you might describe as ultimate you want reality. It. That has become what real is, okay, to me. What is that feeling? And, 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 and what is that feeling? That what, is that, helping that what is that feeling? Is that, it, that. it was like looking at a thing of great beauty or love, the feeling of love, is it what we were actually, trying to... Actually, sometimes being taken out of myself by beautiful music, which has taken me way beyond yeah. any understand, taken me elevated. to a different place, elevated me do you, do in a, a way that's closer to God. Sometimes when I've sat in a, in a beautiful place in the country and actually thought, what is all this about? Touched by I God. Touch, I have felt something which is beyond me, something of the you, ultimate Peter reality. Reckon. And do, you think, think, do, you Peter think, do you think that we atheists do not feel the same sense of grandeur and wonder at the world? Of course we do. Of course you do. And Fine, I, absolutely. Yeah. And that's led me down my but, road and it's led you down your but, road. But what's it, the problem? But instead but the problem of... Is, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Kate. When he feels that sense of wonder, is he touched by God? And he doesn't know it. That's up to him to decide no, whether he does We're looking or not. For truth. We're looking for truth. And it's either... So am I. No, you're looking for yeah. truth inside yourself. I'm looking for truth too. I'm engaged in a search around this issue. No, you also not. are engaged in the same well, listen, search. You come to a different conclusion. Patsy.